The Carolina Panthers have been one of the absolute worst teams in the NFL throughout the first month or so of the 2022 NFL season. Everything about this team has not worked out. The quarterback position is a mess. Baker Mayfield was a trade that inspired a little bit of optimism, some hope. However, he has somehow been worse than Sam Darnold was at this time one year ago. DJ Moore is clearly fed up. Matt Rule is a firing waiting to happen. Honestly surprised that he still has his job. The cap situation is a mess. Ben McAdoo's gotta go. So let's get into it. Let's see if we can turn this franchise around. And for the first time in one of these rebuilds, we cannot stand to have Matt Rule in there. We're gonna go custom coach, so it is Jonathan Madden. We are going to be running the Bengals offense, Cowboys defense right off the bat. We might not have the players to fit those schemes right away, but that's okay. Year one, even year two are going to be rough years for us potentially with the money situation. But before we get into it, if you guys enjoy these videos, please, it would do me a huge service. Like the video, comment, tell me your thoughts, request for future videos, subscribe would mean the world to me. Thank you guys. Let's get into the rebuild. And we are starting with real life rosters. We started week one of the regular season. For some reason, that's the furthest it will let me go. Prior Maddens, it would let you go all the way out to wherever we're at in real life. However, that's not the case. I'm not going to go in and sim wins and losses. We're gonna let the CPU does what it do. <laughs> does what it do. And we're going to go from there. But let's take a look at the opening roster, see what we're working with here. Okay, so let's make this brief. We're going to go position by position. Starting with the quarterback spot, absolute mess here. Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, and Matt Corral. Corral is going to be 24 by next year. I don't feel it would be fair to the integrity of the video to put him in at starter right away. Just because, of course, I want a top five pick, but I'm not going to cheat my way to one. So unfortunately, Corral is going to ride the bench for us. He's probably not anyone that we would look for long term. Definitely going to go the draft, trade, maybe even free agency, depending on who's out there, but definitely not any of those three guys. At running back, you've got McCaffrey, a franchise player, but it is fair to wonder. I mean, do we throw him up on the trade block? He's going to be 27. He'll be 28, 29 by the time I feel we're really competitive. Behind him, we have Chuba Hubbard, who has been pretty bad in real life, but a little bit of hope, I suppose, in Madden, given his age. At the receiver position, DJ Moore, the disgruntled stud, 25 years old, definitely a franchise player, would like to build around him. Robbie Anderson probably going on the trade block, which might not make him too unhappy given the fact that he can get away from Baker Mayfield. LaVisca Chenault is an exciting young player to build around. You've got Hollywood Higgins. Andre Roberts is somehow still in the league. Terrace Marshall, who has been... I don't want to say a disappointment, it's just his second year, but has not really come along yet, and Shai Smith. At the tight end spot, Ian Thomas and Tommy Tremble. Tremble is someone I think we might throw into the starting lineup right away. At the left tackle spot, you've got the rookie, Ika McWanu, who I believe has come on the last couple weeks. High hopes for him, especially here in franchise, just 21 years old, stud, franchise player. We've got nothing at the left guard spot, nothing at center. Right guard, absolutely nothing. Austin Corbett is replacement level at best. He's not awful. Taylor Moten is, I mean, our second best lineman. So the whole offensive line is going to be a project for us, to say the least. Brian Burns, someone we definitely want to build around, just 24 years old, superstar dev. Yatur Gross Matos, to this point in his career, has been a bust. Maybe he does something for us. Derek Brown, another stud. If you play Ultimate Team, he was great for you for the first few weeks. He was one of the first to get X Factors or abilities, not to go off on a tangent, but a little bit of a soft spot for Derek Brown. He's also pretty good in real life. At the linebacker spot, Frankie Luvu. I know he got a pick six last week, but aside from that, quiet career so far. Nothing at the middle linebacker spot. And then Shaq Thompson is somehow still around, probably another trade candidate for us. Young secondary, Dante Jackson is good. J.C. Horn, very high hopes for him. C.J. Henderson, so a developable secondary for sure. At the free safety position, we're going to need some work there. Jeremy Chin is an exciting player for us to build around, and that is essentially your roster. So definitely a few guys that I would be somewhat excited to build around, but a lot of spots that are a mess. 
and I did go ahead and throw some players up on the trade block, one of whom is Shaq Thompson. His contract will be up. He's 29. The Ravens are willing to offer us Adafe Owe, second-year player, plays the same position. We're going to go ahead and take that. We are in a full rebuild right now, so I'm happy with that move. And I already know this part of the video is going to upset some people. And I want to preface this move by saying that I'm not in this to make a realistic rebuild. I mean, as realistic as possible, but I'm not going full-blown NFL GM here. The Dolphins are going to offer us Jalen Waddell, Liam Eikenberg, and a first-round pick for Christian McCaffrey. And I think I got to take it. I really think I do. We're going to get Robbie Anderson out of here. I mean, we're strictly building for the future. Can you imagine Christian McCaffrey in that Miami offense, though? Insane. Get him with their head coach. That's an exciting offense. And for us, it's a new era. I mean, Christian McCaffrey is a franchise great for the Panthers. I completely understand that. Just being, living in Charlotte, I see his jersey everywhere. I get it. But we got to do what we got to do. And just a quick check in here at the midseason point, week eight, we are one in six. So it has been an absolute disaster to this point so far. However, that's mostly by design. It is unfortunate for our young guys, especially the ones that we just traded for. I'm sure Jalen Waddle would have been having a lot more fun in Miami, but it is what it is. Let's get to the playoffs, see how we're looking. And at the end of the season, we did string along a couple wins, it looks like, at the end of the year. We end up going 5-12, and 12, last place in the NFC South. And looking at the standings here, it looks like that was good enough to get us a top three pick. It appears we'll be picking third overall. The Vikings a surprise terrible team, but everyone else I would say is about par for the course. Rams a bit of a surprise, but yeah, we were garbage. I believe we'll be picking third. And let's go ahead, let's take a look at the year-end stats. Offense finished 15th, so compared to where they are in real life, not bad. Defense was dead last, though. 32nd, that's awful. Baker had a surprisingly good year. He's over 5,000 yards, 33 touchdowns, 18 picks. However, we know he's gone regardless. Chuba Hubbard struggles. We're going to have to get a new running back. We knew that. In the receiving game, Robbie Anderson leads the league, not the league, the team in yards. 1300 DJ Moore gets 1210 he'd love that in real life Jalen Waddle gets 1209 so very nice receiving core Tommy Tremble picks up almost 905 so very nice there how did we do as far as sacks allowed just looking for less than double digits Taylor Moten was bad Ika McWanu for a rookie 14 we'll accept that now let's look at our league losing defense Corey Littleton led the team in tackles I'm looking to see Odafe. Did he do anything for us? He had 78 tackles. Looks like he had four sacks. How do we do on pass rush? Awful. Matt Ioannidis led the team with six. Five and a half just for Brian Burns. Four for Derek Brown. Yikes. That pass rush is a problem and not in a good way. J.C. Horn led the team in picks with four. Meanwhile, three for C.J. Henderson and Dante Jackson. And here is your season recap. Tom Brady wins MVP again, much to the displeasure of Giselle, I'm sure. Meanwhile, the Cowboys destroy the Buffalo Bills in the Super Bowl, 35-7. Dak wins Super Bowl MVP. That's how you know it's a video game, not realistic. Just kidding, kind of. But that's your season recap. And we've got some players ready to negotiate. As it stands right now, we are in a bad cap position. Poised to enter the offseason with $16 million. That is not good at all. We've got Matt Ioannidis. He's a no. Baker, unfortunately, is going to be a no. Bozeman, uh-uh. Sam Darnold, definitely not. We will need a new kicker. I did notice that. But, yeah, none of these guys need to come back. Hopefully, by bringing none of them back, it will open things up for us a little bit. It's just, just as in real life, the can't not the campers, the Panthers cap situation is an absolute mess. So yeah, still around 16.5 million here as we enter free agency. Is there anyone we can scoop up that has any actual interest in us? Javon Hargrave is 30. No one wants us right now. And I'm thinking the main reason for that is we don't have a franchise quarterback. So we're probably going to be pretty quiet this free agency period, unfortunately. Anyways, here's a quick look at the team. Matt Corral currently poised to be our starting quarterback. Don't know about that. We'll see how the draft goes. 
The receiving core, I like what we have. The offensive line is offensive. I mean, really, it could be worse. We definitely need a new center, but... Eh. Tommy Tremble, maybe he's okay there. Defensively, we've got some guys we like, and we also have plenty of holes. So, it's not looking the best. Let's head back to free agency, see if there's anyone at all we can scoop up. Okay, so two signings here, of course, cannot afford to break the bank by any means, but we are going to bring in Rashad Penny on a two-year deal. Nothing too crazy, just keeps us from having to address that position as early in the draft as we otherwise probably would. And Nasir Adderley, I feel, is a decent signing for us, gives us something at the free safety position. So, yeah, not an exciting, splashy offseason by any means, but definitely a decent one. And heading into the draft, I do want to do a little bit of homework on the quarterback position, see who might be available. It is a very thin class. Matthew Hunt is your only projected round one guy. Let's take a quick look at him here. He's projected to go top five, so we don't know if he'd be available to us at three. He's just 21 years old, A deep, B medium, A short, A under pressure. He looks like a sure thing. Let's see, he's... He's a pretty good athlete, strongest quarterback in the class. I like this guy. Do we try and trade up to one? What would it take? Let's take a look and see. So the Vikings are picking first overall, and we did a little, a little bit, a little bit of wheeling and dealing here. All that it's going to take to get that first overall pick is pick number three. So in fairness to the Vikings, they're only moving back two spots, but all that we have to give up to get that is a future third. So, not bad at all. We are now going to be getting our guy number one overall. He is locked in. Here we are, 2023 NFL Draft on the clock. Picking first overall, let's go out and get our guy. Quarterback of the future, we are excited for this. Let's grab him. As soon as the screen will load, thank you EA for the wonderful game you've put together for us. Matthew Hunt, and I just caught this, out of East Carolina, so hometown hero. I don't know exactly where East Carolina is, still relatively new to the area, but let's hope for Hidden Dev. I'm thinking he should have it. Normal Dev. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. That's fine. 92 throw power, so we'll work with him. But he's our guy, regardless. This is the future of the franchise. Number three is what he's going to wear, I guess, and we got him. Okay, back on the clock, 25th overall. Remember, we got this from our trade with the Dolphins, getting Christian McCaffrey over there. We desperately need a center. Pierre Covington is the top player on the board. 22 years old, A to C awareness, A impact block, A to C pass block. And you look at his measurables, fifth fastest, second strongest. The guy is just, he's agile. I think he's going to be a good pick for us. Fingers crossed. Please give me quick dev, hidden dev, whatever. Yes, hidden dev. Okay, there we go. So we got our quarterback and our center duo of the future. Definitely happy with that. Okay, so back on the clock. Round two, pick three. Early second round. We would still need help at linebacker pretty badly. Jalil Roach out of Boston College. He's got B block shed, A pursue, A to C tackle, and A zone coverage. So he looks pretty good. And then as far as athletics are concerned, top five in nearly every category, top 10 in all of them. Let's go ahead and take him here. We're getting an athlete, which usually is a good sign, and that is what we confirm here. We get Jalil Roach. He's going to wear number 90. Love that number on him already. And he's got hidden devs. So two for three on hidden devs so far. We're looking good. So next up, we are in the fourth round, pick three. I'm going to be honest, there's no one on the board really worth taking. San Francisco is willing to give us a third, so we will now have a third round pick next year, having just traded away our original pick to trade up and get our quarterback. So this is a move I'm happy with. And honestly, I know I'm probably not supposed to do this, but... I'm just not seeing anyone, so I'm going to skip ahead in the draft. I'm going to let the CPU handle the last few rounds. I don't really have a great eye for late round talent. I'm going to be completely transparent here. I don't care to sift through. EA just makes it kind of difficult to find your athletes. I feel in previous Maddens, for as bad as they were, it was a lot easier to see who ran the fast 40s, who had the high bench presses. Honestly, I just don't care a whole lot in this draft to go through and look. I'm happy with our draft class. Let's see how we did. So it looks like there was only one pick left to begin with. I'm assuming 
Probably the remaining picks had to do with the um, Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield trades. However, we do have our quarterback of the future. He is a 76 overall, just 21 years old, so still plenty of time to grow. And our rookie center is a 74 overall. I believe he will be an instant starter for us. Jalil Roach, we should be able to get him into the starting lineup right away. And the CPU did go ahead and take a running back for us. He's probably not going to be anything. I'm going to be completely honest. Already 23 years old. He's not very fast. How's his strength? Is he even strong? No, he's he's useless. Completely useless. RJ Young, why, why did you even declare for the draft? Anyways, here is your week one starting roster. So three rookies will be starting, two on the offensive side of the ball, one on the defense. It's all going to come down to Hunt. Can he succeed as a rookie? Can he overcome his normal development? He's got a nice rookie center in Covington, so the offensive line is looking passable, no pun intended. Rashad Penny is going to have to carry the load, definitely no Christian McCaffrey, but also we've got Jalen Waddell. Meanwhile, on the defensive side, still I feel the pass rush is going to be lacking. I will probably hit free agency just to get a low 70s DT, nothing too crazy. Outside of that, not a lot of high hopes for this defense, although hopefully they can finish better than 32nd. I would not be surprised to see them in the 20s again. Definitely not surprised by that. Hoping not the 30s, but we'll find out. We're going to go ahead. I'll get us a little DT. Let's get to the midseason point, see whose contracts might be up, who we want to bring back, see how the team's looking. Okay, so mid-season point, we are 1-6, which I think is the same point we were at last year. Honestly, pretty close to what I expected. The team is still just not very good. I'd have to imagine the defense is terrible. We'll take a further look at stats once playoffs get here. We do have some trade offers for LaVisca Chenault, so let's approach those, see what we can get maybe. Honestly, it's not a whole lot. I'm not really impressed by what I'm getting here. Might as well let Hunt have another playmaker. Maybe we finish the year terribly again, but at least we have LaVisca Chenault. And we do get to upgrade our players, which will help the overalls, of course. Maybe that helps us grind out some wins second half of the year. It's what always happens. You get to the midseason point, you've won zero or one games, and then somehow you finish five and 12. I don't know how that works. I would like to have the number one overall pick. That'd be amazing. I just don't think it's gonna happen. Now, by nature, with a rebuild, especially one with this team in particular, it's going to take a few years. Last year, we did not have any money to spend. No one liked us. So this year, as you can see, we have $115 million in cap space. However, a chunk of that is going to have to go to retaining the talent of Brian Burns. A neutral deal would keep him here for three years. Player friendly would keep him here for an additional. And let's see, he's going to want around $20 million a year. Let's start out with a neutral. Okay, so we have Brian Burns back for the next three seasons. That's a dub for us. We'll take that. Still have around $100 million in cap space. Jeremy Chin wants nothing to do with us. He might be a cap, not a cap, a um, franchise tag candidate. Derek Brown also wants nothing to do with us. We'll have to take a look at the year-end stats. And aside from that, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of anything here. So... That is unfortunate. We may lose out on one of these two guys, possibly even both, Jeremy Chin and Derek Brown. Why don't they like us? What's their beef? So Jeremy Chin, his motivations are he wants a mentor at the position. Bro, you, you should be the mentor at this point. Like you're 25. Like who do you need to mentor you? You're you're 84 overall. I don't get it. Historic championships and big market. Okay, so you want to go pay for play for the Rams. That's fine. Be my guest. And Derek Brown, why do you hate us? Scheme fat. Okay. Fair enough, I guess. Makes more sense than Jeremy Chin. And let's see here. Team has franchise QB. Okay, we do have one of those. And you want to play for a big market as well. I get it. Charlotte is not one of those. So Derek Brown, at least I kind of respect your decision. So with all of that being said, might have been a good idea to try and trade LaVisca. I just, I don't care. We're not going to get anything good for him anyways. We might as well keep him around. Let's get to the playoffs. I'm going to guess 4-13. 4-13 and 13. Four and 13 or 5-12. and 12. Let's find out. Okay, so I was spot on. We finished 4-13, and 13, last place in the NFC South. 
how did we do as far as draft positioning goes? Because of course we're going to be in the market for some blue chip players. We need those. We clearly don't have any given the records the last couple of years. Cowboys, best team in the league, allegedly. And we should have the number one overall pick, actually. So that's interesting. I mean, depending on how our quarterback did, do we pull an Arizona Cardinals? It'd be more dramatic than what the Cardinals did, considering we traded up to one to get this guy. Let's go ahead. Let's upgrade our players. So again, we'll get a nice little overall boost, including for Derek Brown here, who might not be a Panther next year, unfortunately. And let's look at the stats. So the rookie quarterback did not come in and immediately turn the offense around. We actually regressed, 23rd. Defense performed marginally better, 29th. Let's look at the rookie. He does put up 5,000 yards through the air, 30 touchdowns, 16 picks, passer rating under 100. I don't love that. However, he didn't really have a run game to rely on, although Rashad Penny did score 14 touchdowns. In the receiving game, DJ Moore with 1,500 yards and six scores. That's a very DJ Moore season. Robbie Anderson with 1,200. Waddle is over 1,004. Tommy Tremble with eight touchdowns. Did our blocking improve at all? I think Ickham allowed 14 last year. He allowed 12 this year. Pierre Covington, the rookie, lets up five. Not sure if that's good or not for a center. But he was second in the team. Odafe Owe leads the team in tackles with 161. Very nice. I'm going to assume the pass rush was non-existent. Pretty much. Although Yachir Gross Matos hits double digits, surprisingly. Derek Brown with six and a half, four and a half for Brian Burns. Interceptions, how did we do? Three for Jeremy Chin, who is a crybaby. Just kidding, kind of. Where is Roach? How did Roach do as a rookie? I'm looking for him. He had 44 tackles and four TFLs. Did he do anything at all? Three deflections, no forced fumbles. Quiet year for the rookie, but that's okay. So here is your season recap. The Colts are Super Bowl champions. Go Colts. And Jonathan Taylor, Super Bowl MVP. Joe Burrow is the regular season MVP. Anything else exciting happen? We do not win Rookie of the Year. Goes to Brad Knight, quarterback for the Seahawks. Interesting. Okay, but that's your season recap. Okay, and yet again, time to negotiate. So Jeremy Chin, is there anything we can do to bring you back? Because we have absolutely nothing at the position behind you. So I know a neutral deal is not going to do it. I mean, if we overpay, if we give you a team-friendly deal player friendly deal forgive me is that enough he's still going to test free agency let's see if we can get Derek Brown on a player friendly deal because he also completely hates us I'll tell you what let's spend some staff points here so here you can see hometown discount 5% discount on players under 80 and we can get up to a discount under 85 and if I remember correctly he's an 84 so that might help us a little bit fingers crossed Let's take a look here and see. Is there anything else that would help us right now? So these are all through free agency. We're not going to mess with those. Let's go back and see. Can we get Derek Brown back? Okay, so we should have a slight discount. So Derek Brown wants a three-year deal. He's also 26 years old. Player friendly, what's that going to do for us? Is that going to be enough? He's not interested either. How much does the franchise tag cost for these guys? Because we desperately need help at both positions. Chin would be around 16 mil. Derek Brown would be around 20. Chin's the better player. We're going to franchise tag Jeremy Chin. He's probably not going to want to come back to us. Everyone else can probably go because no one likes us, unfortunately. We're just not a popular team this time around. That's okay. We've got state income tax. We're in a small market. I get it. So let's take a look at the roster heading into free agency here. So it looks like Hunt actually did get up to star dev. Not bad. 82 overall. Covington also star dev. As far as the offensive line goes, Eichenberg has not developed. We would probably want a new guard, maybe even two. I like what we have at the tackle spot. Tight end, not really a massive need. We could probably use a third receiver. Definitely need help at running back. 
And then let's take a look at the defense here. So in the secondary, the corners just have not developed for us. The defensive line is a mess outside of Brian Burns. We need a whole new D line. We need new linebackers. Is Roach superstar? For not developing, I know he had quick dev. I know they randomized that. Yeah, he's a superstar. Okay. He didn't play like it, but he's got the dev. So I suppose we continue to roll him out for another year or two. Outside of that, definitely need a new middle linebacker. We could use a new free safety. Adderley was a bit of a band-aid for us. So yeah, we've got some work to do. Okay, so first wave of free agency, the blue chip guys, here is who we are targeting. The only player that we're sending a player-friendly deal to is Nick Bosa. He's got no interest in us whatsoever, but he's Nick Bosa. So if we could get him, it would be a massive grab for us. We're currently top of his list. I doubt we snag him. We're the only ones sending an offer for AJ Terrell, surprisingly enough, could snag him from the Falcons. And then same thing with the Bucks. We're sending a neutral deal to Devin White. So fingers crossed, I'm hoping we can get at least two of these guys. Three would be incredible, but let's go ahead and see here. I click the button, waiting to evaluate those offers any day now, EA. Thank you. Anyone still on the list? No, they all signed. Did we get them? We got all three. Oh, wow. Yeah, bro. A defense that has Nick Bosa, AJ Terrell, and Devin White. These are guys just entering their primes, superstar players. This is incredible. I think we just turned around the defense overnight. Still have some work to do, obviously, but this helps a ton. Okay, so next wave. T. Higgins. No one's going after him right now. We're going to send him a neutral deal. Could you imagine that receiving core? DJ Moore, Jalen Waddle, and T. Higgins. Nasty. Fletcher Cox has no interest in us whatsoever, but we desperately need the help at DT. Let's try and get him in here on a one-year deal. How are we looking? T. Higgins is still out there. I'm going to assume we got Fletcher Cox. I didn't see any other offers for him. I'm going to assume we got T. Higgins as well. Let's see here. We did. So free agency. The Carolina Panthers, they went all in. Nick Bosa, A.J. Terrell, Devin White, T. Higgins, and Fletcher Cox. Amazing. And heading into the draft, things are looking a lot more optimistic for us. Offensively, it's not going to show right away. However, T. Higgins is right there. Our three receiver sets are going to be insane. Forget about the run game. Sorry, Chuba. We could use some offensive line help for sure. Defensively, we still really, really badly need a DT. The secondary could still use some help despite the addition of A.J. Terrell. Could use a free safety still, but aside from that, we're looking a lot better. The pass rush should improve dramatically now. You've got Bosa on one side, Brian Burns on the other. I like what we have here tremendously. And as we head into the draft, we know, of course, we still need some defensive help. I also like to look and see whose contracts might be up. So Jalen Waddle, he will be due. Do we want to pay him or do we want to possibly look for his successor in the draft? Jeremy Chen, he has no interest in us. We're definitely going to want to look for strong safeties. DTs is already a big need for us. Corner, outside linebacker even, unless we want to pay Adafe Owe, which isn't completely out of the question. Running back is a huge need for us. Regardless, we do not want Rashad Penny back in there for another year. Xavier Woods, so free safety. Punter, who cares? Guard, corner. Yeah, we've got a lot of needs. Even Tommy Tremble, we could look to go the, the tight end position. And here we are in the draft. On the clock, round one, pick one. I'm not of the mindset that we need to upgrade from our quarterback. I'm going to let the Bears trade up with us. They will give us the 15th overall pick, which still should give us a very nice player in this year's draft. A first round pick next year, which it's the Bears. They're probably going to be pretty bad. And a fourth in this year's draft. So... All in all, I think that's a solid offer. We're taking that. Let's see who the Bears take. I am genuinely wondering, what could they possibly want to trade up to number one for? Is it a quarterback? It is. So the Justin Fields era is over in Chicago, which is unfortunate. I had a lot of hopes for him coming into the NFL draft as a rookie, even coming into this year. Thought he showed some growth. But that was just preseason flashiness, I suppose. Him and Cole Komet have not worked out the way I thought they would. But anyways, here we are back on the clock, pick 15. Let's see who's available. 
And with the 15th overall pick, I'm looking at Josh Wiggins here. He doesn't blow me away by any means. I don't really want to trade back again, though. He's got A to C catching, C man, which I don't love. However, B press and B zone. He is an athlete. He runs a 4-4-240. He's the strongest corner in the class. So I would say he's worth the pick here. I don't know that I'm super excited for him. He does have hidden dev. 94 excel with 92 speed. We had a need at cornerback, and I think he's going to help us fill that. For a mid-first round pick, you could do a lot worse than Josh Wiggins. Okay, so next up, round two, pick one. Next guy on the board is Tremaine Dobson. He's a DT. I like him a lot. C block shedding I don't love. B finesse. A to C power and A tackling. We have a definite very bad need at DT. He's the second strongest in the class. Best available on the board right now. He's pretty agile too. How big is he? I mean, considering the size, he is, what, 306 pounds, so pretty big guy. What I'm going to try and do here is, since he's projected rounds two and three, can we trade back, get ourselves maybe a mid-second round pick, take a bit of a gamble here, hope he's still there? Let's try it. Okay, so the thing is, when I'm looking at these, I'm just not loving the offers. Anything that's going to get me a second round pick this year... All they're really going to want to add in is a fourth, which I'm not overly thrilled about. I don't care a whole lot about. So yeah, it might be seen as a bit of a reach, but let's go and get our DT. All right, so here he is, Tremaine Dobson, freaky athlete. Is that going to be enough to get us hidden dev, a star player we can build around? Let's hope so. It does. Thank God. 92 strength for a DT. I'm happy with that. Yeah, so Tremaine Dobson gets to learn alongside Fletcher Cox. He'll have help from Nick Bosa and Brian Burns. Suddenly, the defensive line is not looking as bad as it once did. Okay, back on the clock here. I would like to get us some help, just a little bit more for the offensive line. That's where Pat Freeman comes into play. A awareness, A impact, B pass, B to D run block. He is the fifth strongest in the class. He's pretty agile. Let's get him. Let's hope for the best. Normal dev. That's okay. We've gone two for two so far, so that's okay that we get a normal dev here in the third round. At least gives us some depth, depth, hopefully something to build around. And here we are in the fourth. Probably the last pick I will manually take until I let the CPU take over, but we've got Demarius Dickens. I love the name. Let me just say that right now. Out of Rutgers of all schools, he's got A carrier vision, A to C break tackle, A carrying, B to D catching, and look at this. He's a power back. He runs a 4-3-9-40, bro. This guy is insane. I don't know how a guy of his profile slipped this far. If anyone's got hidden dev, I would be shocked if he doesn't. No, he's got normal dev, but that's fine. The guy just looks like an absolute unit. We're going to put him in. We're going to let him start right away. As long as his overall is not terrible, which I don't think it should be. But yeah, Demarius Dickens is the pick here. Let's let the CPU take over and we will see from there. Okay, so getting into the draft recap. A lot of 70 plus overall guys. Very encouraging. Josh Wiggins, our first round pick. 75 overall corner. We've got Tremaine Dobson also coming in at 75 overall. Pat Freeman, our third round pick, looking not the best, 72. Demarius Dickens is coming into the league at a 77 overall. No clue how this guy has normal dev. Bit disappointed by that, but that's okay. The CPU did get us 91 overall Eric Keys, so that's somewhat exciting. And then Jason Foster, probably a practice squad guy. Okay, so heading into week one, let's take a look at the team. So offensively... Again, it's going to come down to the line, and it's going to come down to Hunt. Can he take the step forward as a rookie? Dickens, let's go ahead, get him in there. RB1, week one. So hopefully can provide a huge spark for our offense. Rashad Penny is refusing to go down without a fight, probably because Dickens is starting at fullback, so we're going to fix that really quick. But yeah, Dickens is a week one starter for us, and then defensively, should be a massive step forward for this unit. Would be very surprised if not. Dobson, the rookie, high hopes for him. The secondary still has some question marks. I'm going to try and get... I'll move Wiggins. We're going to put him at CB3, try and get him some reps right away. JC Horn has just not worked out for us for whatever reason. But yeah, I don't know if it's a playoff team quite yet, but I think it's close to it. I definitely don't think this is number one overall pick bad. I don't think we'll be picking top five in the draft. Let's get to the midseason. Okay, so midseason point, we are 5-2. and two. Much better, much better start than the last two seasons. 
I think that's as many wins almost as the last two seasons combined, honestly. For as pathetic as we've been, 5-2 is a great start. Love to see it. Who's ready to negotiate? Okay, so two tidbits of very good news. Number one, we are poised to have around $88 million in cap space. Number two, the only player that I'm really dying to have back is going to be Jalen Waddell. And furthermore, he's actually interested in us. Everyone else, they hate us for whatever reason. Rashad Penny likes us, but we don't like him. So yeah, we're not tripping over any of these guys. Let's go ahead. Let's see if we can just go ahead and lock down Waddle, get him in here on just a neutral deal since he likes us. That would leave us with around 70 million. What do you mean to not be a fit for you? You like us, whatever. We'll, we'll come back to him, no worries. And here we are in the playoffs. We finished the year 11 and six, NFC South champs, let's go, man. We've finally done it. We've secured our first playoff berth of the series. Let's look at the stats, see how we got here. And here are your year-end stats. It was a top 10 offense as we finished number nine, very nice, and 16th defense, so league average. That's a huge step up for us. Here are the stats. Matthew Hunt, very nice season. 5,000 yards, 46 touchdowns to just seven picks, man. Crazy. The passer rating going up almost 20 points from his rookie year. So no sophomore slump here. Matthew Hunt is clearly the future. Glad we held out on him and had faith. Demarius Dickens, he puts up over 1,000 yards as a rookie, 17 touchdowns, so very nice. Just four per carry, but with the playbook, we are running Bengals. It is just, it's not set up for running back success. So all things considered, very happy with that. Demarius Dickens, well done. In the receiving game, T. Higgins puts up 1,300. That number three receiver just always does it for some reason. DJ Moore, 1,300 yards, 15 touchdowns this time. Jalen Waddle, bit of a quiet year, under 1,000 yards, six touchdowns. Do we move on from him? With the scheme, I mean, he's nice for us. He opens up things for T. Higgins, clearly, but I don't know. We'll come back to him. In the blocking game, how did Ickham do? Much better, only allowing six sacks. This was a huge step up for this team in every single capacity. Devin White, our leading tackler with 121. Did the pass rush get things going for us? Yes, Nick Bosa with 14 sacks, 13 for Brian Burns, and 12 for the rookie Tremaine Dobson. Let's go. Wow. So, man, these last two rookie classes, combined with the free agency spending that we've done, look at that, man. A.J. Terrell, seven picks, three for Devin White, three for Nasir Adderley. That rookie corner that we had, did he do anything for us? I'm not seeing him anywhere on here. Josh Wiggins, no, unfortunately. He just did not get to see the field a whole lot. I could have sworn I put him into the starting lineup. Must have just been the CPU doing CPU things, but regardless, happy with it. Just want to take a quick look at the yearly awards. Matthew Hunt, look, he's up to an 89 overall. He comes in second in MVP voting. Second year in the league. Well done, Matthew Hunt. We come in third for Coach of the Year. Not bad at all. Let's look at the other awards here. Offensive Player of the Year, Matthew Hunt and DJ Moore both earning votes. Defensive Player of the Year, there's Nick Bosa and AJ Terrell. Two free agent additions. Demarius Dickens, he's up to an 84 overall. He wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Wonderful season. Defensive Rookie of the Year, we get the sweep. Tremaine Dobson up to an 82. He wins it. Did we get anyone else on the list? I don't think so. Best quarterback is going to go to Hunt, of course. Best running back, Dickens, comes in at five. Best receiver, we've got one, two guys on the list. Best O-line, anyone at all. There's Austin Corbett, okay. Best D-line, I saw Bosa. Tremaine Dobson already getting in there as a rookie. Best linebacker, nobody. Best DB, AJ Terrell, well-deserved after seven picks. Very nice. But here we are in the playoffs taking on the Atlanta Falcons. AJ Terrell's old team. Can he come through in the clutch, make some big plays, help us move on? Let's find out. And he does. 34-18, we get the victory. Let's look at the stats. Just a quick little I told you so to anyone that says we sim wins. I get that comma every so often. Here it is, 18 to 34. Easy victory. How did we do? Clearly outgaining them in total yards. <clears throat> Matthew Hunt has a perfect game. Not technically perfect, but three touchdowns, no picks in his first playoff appearance. Desmond Ritter, not a bad game. Glad to see him starting. Demarius Dickens scores on the ground. In the receiving game, we've got DJ Moore. 
over 100. Let's see here. Defensively, how did we do? Probably pretty well. OA leads the team in tackles with 12. He was very active. How did we do on sacks? Pretty quiet day. It looks like we did not bring down Ritter at all, although we do get a pick from Nasir Adderley, and we're moving on to Seattle. Can we move on to the conference championship game? Seahawks-Panthers, a matchup that you saw pretty often in the 2010s, Russell Wilson and Cam Newton going at it. Those were some entertaining games, as they do beat us 42-28. to Let's look at the stats. Okay, so it looks like the Bills beat the Chiefs 25-24. Could you imagine if that happened this year? Rams over the Giants, that would be interesting. Browns over the Bengals, okay. And here is our game against Seattle. The furthest margin of victory, it looks like their offense had their way with us. And Brad Knight, quarterback from the same class, so... This could be the quarterback rivalry of the future here. Brad Knight versus Hunt. Hunt, unfortunately, struggles in Seattle. Ugh, not a good game for him at all. Brad Knight does his thing. Pretty boy. Swag. Demarius Dickens scores a touchdown. Anything going on. DK is over 100. Paris Campbell is a Seahawk. He scores. T. Higgins finds the end zone. So does Tyler Lockett, Tommy Tremble, and Will Disley in the list of mediocre tight ends. <clears throat> OA, again, leading the team in tackles. Did we get any sacks? Not really. Jaleel Roach does get one. Tremaine Dobson. OA and Nick Bosa split one. So do Brian Burns and Nasir Adderley. So the pass rush was doing its job. And Jeff Okuda picks us off twice. So good for him. Glad to see him doing well. Okay, and here is your season recap. What a thriller of a Super Bowl. Unfortunate who the MVP is, but you've got the Browns winning 28-27, their first Super Bowl. You can see there's our two Rookie of the Year awards, so very nice for us, and we are moving on. Okay, so last chance to negotiate with these guys. Jeremy Chin looks like he may have actually come around a little bit. I don't know what changed the tide for him, but he has some interest in us. Jalen Waddle doesn't like what we're giving him. The thing with Jalen Waddle is we already have DJ Moore and T. Higgins. We've got two first-round picks. I think we could go receiver there. I love Jalen Waddle. I just don't think we need him a whole ton. Jeremy Chin has turned the worm, for lack of a better phrase. Oh, it's because we're now a contender. Okay, Jeremy Chin, so you're a bandwagon, but that's okay. If we give you a player-friendly deal, what's that turn us to on cap space? 66 million? I mean, we need you. So, will a player friendly deal do it? Yeah. We're going to sell our souls and get Jeremy Chin back. We we had to. He was just such a big need for us. Dante Jackson is not. Fletcher Cox does like us, but we'll let him hit the market. I don't think anyone's going to go after him. We could get a kicker later on. Owe does not like us at all, but he's done very good things for us. So,. Would a player-friendly deal be enough to get Adafe Owe? He's not interested. That's unfortunate. That's okay, though. I have a feeling we can get someone else out there in free agency with a bigger impact. Rashad Penny is a no for me. Corbett? Ugh. Do we want to try and bring Corbett back? A neutral deal? Will that do it? Okay. Yeah, I mean, that just saves us the headache of having to worry about it. We got to try and keep the O-line intact. They did a pretty good job for us this past year, so we're okay with that. Tommy Tremble. What does Tommy Tremble want? Is Nasir Adderley up? I don't think he is, so we don't need to worry about Xavier Woods. Okay. Tommy Tremble, what do you want for your eight touchdowns a year? He wants, it's going to be around a seven million cap hit. Yeah, because we don't really have anyone else at all behind him. I'm not dying to pay Tommy Tremble by any means, but that still leaves us with a good amount of money heading into free agency. So I'm not overly worried about that. Everyone else, I think, can probably walk. Liam Eichenberg just wants a one-year deal. He's yellow on us. Could we get Liam Eichenberg back for one year? Heck, we'll even make it two. That should do it. Okay, let's head into free agency. Okay, so here is the team heading into free agency. Looks like they gave Hunt X-Factor for coming in second MVP voting. That's incredible. He's a 94 overall, so 
man, one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Definitely a big part of why we got that 11-6 and six record. Dickens is a superstar. He's up to 87. The receiving core looks great. We could use a third guy. The, the offensive line could use a dog, for sure, especially in the interior. I like what we have at tackle, although Moten's getting up there in age. We need some depth at tight end, and heck, maybe even a fullback, just for some fun. Defensively, who have we got here? So we now have a whole outside linebacker because Owe is gone. Roach is up to an 80. For that superstar dev, he just hasn't been growing how we want him to. Dobson, on the other hand, has been a monster. We need someone alongside him. We need, I would say, safety help. And what is this? Hold on. Our number two corner. Is this our rookie from last year? So they gave him superstar dev. I know he was hidden when we picked him. He's already 24. That's unfortunate. But Josh Wiggins, superstar dev. I don't know if that affects the performance in sim as much as the overall rating, but that's encouraging. That being said, though, I definitely think we could use some help on the defensive side of the ball. Let's see who's out there. Okay, so here are my targets. Not the most exciting free agent class. We do need a kicker. Harrison Butker likes us. We like him. We're going to come crying back to Adafi Owe. We are offering him a very nice deal, despite the fact he hates us. And we're going to pray that it's enough. You know, maybe he has a little bit of sentiment towards us. Maybe we spend some staff points, try and sweeten the deal that way. Fletcher Cox, we could try and bring him back on a one-year deal. Robbie Anderson, he has no one interested in him. And Tyra Conklin, just to give us some tight end depth. I'll tell you what, I'm going to spend some staff points, see if that sweetens the deal for Adafi Owe, and let's check in on this. Okay, so the points have been spent. It was enough to move us up slightly on Owe's list. I doubt it's enough for him. Let's go ahead, fingers crossed. Who are we pulling? Okay, so they've all signed. Who do we get? We did get Adafi Owe back. Whew, lucky us. Okay, so mainly depth at other positions, but we've got a very nice core intact. I like what we've done here. I really do. Now it's draft season. Okay, so heading into the draft, I would say the main positions we're going to be looking for. It's tough because I don't know anyone's going to come in and be an immediate starter for us. It might depend on whose contracts are expiring, but we could definitely use a third receiver. Robbie Anderson, he's good for depth, but I have no intention of him being our Jalen Waddle by any means. Outside of that, maybe we, if there's a generational guy at tight end, maybe we go that spot defensively we definitely need a DT to go along with Dobson I don't necessarily want to run it back with Fletcher Cox safety help is a big issue for us and I say we could look at the secondary so those are kind of the main spots that I'm looking at here also it's worth looking at the guys whose contracts will be up so DJ Moore will be 29 we definitely want to hit receiver hard we're gonna to want to look at that position pretty heavily who else we got here Ika McWanu now he's gonna be back it should give us an option here in a second to pick up his fifth-year option, I'm hoping. DT, of course, receiver we mentioned. Free safety is a big need for us. I would love to upgrade from Nasir Adderley. Been trying to the whole video. The opportunity has just not presented itself. And then no one else really worth speaking on. Okay, and here it is. I was waiting for it. Ika McWanu, what are your thoughts on him? Trying to create a budget. He's shown a lot of talent. Yes, he warrants a long-term contract. So, yes... We are going to pick up his fifth year option. That should help us out. We always go five years in these videos. So I believe this is coming up on year four. We've got two years left. So that should kick the can down the curb, for lack of a better phrase. Should give us a little bit of flexibility. So that's good. And here we are in the 2025 NFL draft. The Packers are picking first overall. You don't see that every day. Who do they go with? They take a left tackle. So a very Green Bay selection. But we are picking, what is that, 16th? Okay, so I believe this is the pick that we got from Chicago. Our next pick is 26. So yeah, Chicago was pretty mediocre. So happy with that. Let's see who's on the board here. Okay, so I went through my needs and DT is a spot I would like to go possibly in the second. Unfortunately, there's no good free safety options this year. However, Colby Bennett is just an absolute stud. And with this pick, this is, I mean, he's projected round one. I know we have Jeremy Chin, but... 
I mean, I hate to see it, I think I could move him over to free safety and probably do better than what we've gotten out of Nasir Adderley. He runs a 4-4-3, he's pretty strong, he's very agile, I mean, he is an elite athlete, and that's what I look for with these draft picks. This is how you get the hidden dev guys, I'm thinking he could be one of them. He is, hidden dev, 91 excel, 92 speed. I don't know what his overall will be as a strong safety and definitely as a free safety free safety trying to move him over. That could end up failing, backfiring in my face miserably, but we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, now here is where I would like to reach a little bit. And the reason for doing that is this is Leonard Oakman. Just the name. Think about the name. He's a we're a top fit for him. He's 22 years old out of Utah. And just look at this. I found this 43 reps on the bench. This guy is a freak. Remember Sean Oakman, that giant guy out of, I think, Baylor it was, who unfortunately had his career ruined by what I believe were false allegations, if I remember correctly. I, I don't know for sure. Not trying to be ignorant. That's just my very vague memory of what happened with him. But here's Leonard Oakman. Bit of a reach, but we're doing it. He's got hidden depth, and he has 95 strength. Look at him. This guy knows he's a tank. Is that a faux hawk that I see? That doesn't match up. The, the skin tones, I mean, that's look at those two side by side. I don't know. Something's glitchy. Hopefully his gameplay is glitchy, but 85 Excel on top of that. This guy should be a freak. Instant starter for us. Okay, and here we are in the second. Now, when it gets to year five, that's usually when I like to start trading away picks, doing everything that I can to push for the Super Bowl in that last season. I want to go receiver, and I want to go offensive line, I believe, but I'm just not seeing anyone here worthy of that pick who I don't think would be available later on. So we're going to trade with the Steelers. We're going to pick up a second round pick in next year's draft. Okay, so round three, we're doing the same thing. I'm just not seeing anyone who I feel is going to make an impact for us. We're going to trade with the Bucks, pick up a third round pick next year. Okay, and last pick of the draft before I let the CPU take over. We could use some tight end depth. Here's Jordan Sullivan, 23 years old. Not super thrilled about him. He does run a 4-6-6. Six, six. So he's not Kyle Pitts by any mean, by any means, excuse me. But, I mean, we'll take him. And we're going to let the CPU finish things out for us. Okay, so here is your draft recap. Colby Bennett, the strong safety, coming in at 77 overall. Not sure if that will translate to the free safety position, but we'll see. There's Leonard Oakman, 77 right off the bat. He'll be an instant starter for us. Outside of that, not really a whole lot. Although Marcus Charles is exciting. 70 overall with 95 speed, 96 excel. Maybe we throw him at wide receiver three and see if something glitchy happens. But yeah, happy with the draft class. Okay, so week one, here is your starting lineup. So, yeah, looking pretty good in the receiving core, I would say. I'm not thrilled with Anderson as my wide receiver three. I think Charles is going to get the move up here. He is going to be the guy. No, we don't want him second. We want him third. That's where he's going to be. So, yeah, high hopes for the um, late round pick rookie. Maybe he pulls a Tyreek Hill. That would be great. Um, aside from that, it all comes down to Hunt per usual. Dickens is a stud, should continue to be that for us. The offensive line is good enough, I would say. And then defensively, Bennett translates pretty well to the free safety spot. He's going to go up to the starter, finally over Adderley. That should hopefully help us a little bit. Linebacking core is good. Oakman is going to be our DT2 alongside Dobson, so two young studs there. And I like what we've got. Ooh, actually, the cornerback room is pretty thin. That's kind of on me for neglecting that. So... I'm going to pick up some guys, some lower overalls, and let's get to midseason, see how we're looking. Okay, so at the midseason point, we are 4-2, and two, so on schedule for the playoffs. Good team overall, up to an 88 it appears. So, yeah, I am would have been happy to see us undefeated. Not necessarily expecting that, but it would have been nice. Let's see who's ready to negotiate. Okay, so we should be entering the offseason again with some money to spend. Perks of having a rookie quarterback contract. DJ Moore's got no interest in us. That's unfortunate because he's going to be 29, so that's fine. Fletcher Cox isn't starting for us. Maybe we bring him back for a third year. Nasir Adderley, no thank you. 
Robbie Anderson's going to be a no, unfortunately. So, yeah, no one that I'm dying to bring back. Here are a couple depth pieces I added at the corner spot. I will check on the pass defense, just those stats in particular, to see maybe it's worth bringing in a veteran corner here at the trade deadline. And let's just do a quick overview. So the offense has regressed a bit, 18th in total yards. We do have a top 10 defense, so that's nice. And we are second in points scored, so we're scoring enough. It's just the yardage isn't quite there. And 24th in points allowed, so yikes. And yeah, let's look at the stats here really quick, just because I am curious. So Matthew Hunt, not having an amazing year, not awful by any means. We know the run game is going to be what it is. We don't need to upgrade at running back. In the receiving game, you've got DJ Moore, T. Higgins, yeah, Tommy Tremble should not be third in yards. It looks like, oh man. Yeah, I think Robbie Anderson was a mistake in free agency. I think we should try and get ourselves a veteran receiver if we can. How is the defense? Are we getting interceptions at least? I would like to see that. Where are those at? I went way past them. How is the secondary performing? So you've got, okay, Josh Wiggins has two. And let's see, one for Jalil Roach. Yeah, we brought in some veteran corners. Maybe we make a couple moves here, see if we can get a receiver and a corner, if not one or the other. Okay, so Odell Beckham is 32 at this point, still an 84 overall. He's playing for the Bears of all teams. We got to get him in here, get him on a team that's competing for a championship. We know the Bears are trash. So they were a little bit stingy. It does take a second and a fifth, which at this stage in his career, yeah, that could be seen as a bit of an overpay. However, we desperately needed a third receiving threat. I'm hoping this will turn things around for us as we go on that playoff run, hopefully. Okay, and next and final move at the trade deadline. It takes a third and a fourth, but we're going to secure Byron Jones from the Dolphins. Get ourselves a nice corner, really round out that secondary, a nice veteran presence. I'm happy with this in the Odell move. This should, I think, help fully shape the core of the team as we try and get ourselves in position for, you know, hopefully a high seed in the playoffs. But let's sim there. Let's see how we do. Okay, and playoffs are here. We go 14-3. and three. We lose just one game down the stretch. So clearly, those moves paid off. Either that or our first half schedule was just a bit harder. A couple games to get figured out. But man, 14-3. and three, Stoked by that. Number one seed in the conference. Let's look at the stats. So we end up finishing with the number one offense in the NFL. Absolutely insane. Defense, it looks like, was number one as well, bro. How does this happen? Let's look at the stats. How did this go down? So Matthew Hunt, amazing year. 5,500 yards, 46 touchdowns, 18 picks. So a bit of a gunslinger kind of year. Don't love the nearly 20 picks, but that's okay. Demarius Dickens up to 4.4 a carry. So I think around half a yard better than last year. 16 touchdowns on the ground. Very nice year for him. In the receiving game, DJ Moore, 19 scores. Odell, 1,100 yards, although we don't know how many were with us. However, I would say definitely a boost for us in a major way. That helped the receiving core tremendously. T. Higgins, 1,110. Tommy Tremble picks up four touchdowns. And yeah, not a whole lot else going on there. Blocking. I have to assume the pass blocking was in good shape. It was. Ickham only allows nine sacks. How do we get the number one defense? Devin White leading the team in tackles with 120. How did that pass rush do? Pretty good, I would have to imagine. Yes. 18 and a half sacks for Nick Bosa. 18 for Tremaine Dobbins. Second year stud. Seven and a half for Brian Burns. Where's our DT at? Where is that guy? Where is he? Leonard Oakman only picks up half a sack as a rookie. Very disappointed to see that. That's okay, I guess. Yikes. Don't love that. Four picks for A.J. Terrell, three for Wiggins, two for Byron Jones, and that is how we get the number one defense. Trey Lance wins MVP as a Ram. Interesting. Hunt coming in at fourth in the MVP race. We came in second for Coach of the Year. Second for Offensive Player of the Year is DJ Moore. 
Defensive Player of the Year, Nick Bosa, well-deserved. Tremaine Dobson also earning votes. Offensive Rookie of the Year, we're not going to have anyone. Defensive, I highly doubt it. It's a very quiet year for our defensive guys. Disappointing. Best Quarterback, Hunt comes in at third. Best Running Back. Demarius Dickens coming in at five. Receiver should be, you well, know, Moore comes in at second. That's fine. Okay, we don't really care about the rest. But, yeah, great year for us. Okay, so divisional round, we get a date with the 9-8 and eight Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, divisional rivalry game. Do we come out on top? Let's find out. It is going to be tough because they've got Jeff Bezos at quarterback. So, clearly Megamind is under center. Dustin Downs. Yikes. Okay, and we do overcome the Amazon Prime Buccaneers. We win 28-17. Let's look at the stats. Okay, so divisional round. Chiefs win a good one against the Broncos. Here's our game. Bengals beat the Jets and the Cowboys. Always a scary team to face off against in Sim. Let's see how our game went. So 424 yards of total offense. Matthew Hunt, nice game. Did throw a pick. Dustin Down struggled, unfortunately. Demarius Dickens finds the end zone. In the receiving game, Tommy Tremble leads the way. Pretty quiet game all around. DJ Moore scores, and Odell scores twice. Good for him. Defensively, our leading tackler, Devin White. We get any sacks this game? We do. Tremaine Dobson gets two and a half stud. Two for Nick Bosa and a half for Fletcher Cox. I have to wonder, where is he? Where is that guy? Our DT, the rookie, did did I forget to put him in as a starter? I honestly think I did. Jason Foster does get an interception, so that's nice. But yeah, let me move that DT to the starting position over Fletcher Cox. He should have been there the whole time. I have to imagine that's probably why his stats look as light as they do. Okay, so Leonard Oakman is now a starting DT. I made sure of it. We're a 91 overall team on paper, but the Cowboys are always such a huge challenge. Can we get past them? We could not. They beat us 30 to 27. Very close game. We're going home again. Okay, so 30 to 27 loss. It's a very close one, but there's no moral victories, especially not in the playoffs, as their offense had their way with us. Dak had a good game. Matthew Hunt was okay, I suppose. He just struggles in that second game. Dickens finds the end zone. Dalton Schultz has a big game. So does Michael Gallup. Quiet day for our receivers. And then defensively, A.J. Terrell's our leading tackler. Let's look at the sacks. Tremaine gets one. Odafe Owe, Brian Burns, Nasir Adderley, and Nick Bosa. Okay. And yeah, we don't get any interceptions. That's our loss. Okay, and here is your Super Bowl. So very interesting game. The Chiefs top the Cowboys. 35-28, Pat Mahomes, Super Bowl MVP. Quick look at your yearly awards. Cooper Cup has now won two Offensive Player of the Year awards. I don't know if a receiver's ever done that. And Trey Lance, the surprise MVP. And we are moving on. Okay, so a whopping 15 players ready to negotiate. DJ Moore is probably going to be a no for me. Fletcher Cox, definitely not. Nasir Adderley's a no. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say all of these guys can hit the market. Um, wide receiver for sure is going to be a concern. We've got to replace DJ Moore. It's just hopefully someone under the age of 30. Okay, so unfortunately, free agency is a bit of a barren wasteland. I'm not going to lie. We're in the mix for Dallas Goddard. I doubt we get him. We do not. Okay, so... We're going to have to go the trade route because we want to bring in some guys. This is the last year. This is it. We have to compete. Let's see what we can do. And this is the part of the video where we don't care about draft picks. We don't care about young guys, locker room presence. We're going for wins. And we are getting a seven overall upgrade. Tommy Tremble to the Dolphins along with a second round pick for Mike Gesicki, who ultimately, he doesn't belong in Miami anyways. Let's get him over here, get a receiving threat for Hunt. And we're not done there. And hear me out on this. We're sending a first round pick to the Colts for third year receiver Johnny Bryan. Now Johnny Bryan is 24 years old, I believe. Just 82 overall, but hear me out. 99 speed. That's right. I searched by speed. I found him. He's sitting there. I, I mean, how can you argue with 99 speed? We just need 
speed kills. That's the end of the story. We got to do things on offense. I know we finished number one, but ultimately we're just not quite over the hump yet. I think this will help us in a major way. Okay, now another position we want to improve upon if we seriously want to make a Super Bowl push is left guard. Liam Eikenberg's just not cutting it. The Chiefs drive a hard bargain. I tried finagling with them for the last 5-10 minutes. Nothing was working, so yes, it's an overpay, but we're sending a third round pick, a future one, and a future three for Joe Tooney. Okay, and just to round out the roster here, fill some positions I feel we're a bit thin at. We're just going to send out some offers. This is pretty much going to take us down to our bare minimum of resources. Our draft picks are gone. Our cap space is gone. But we're going for Traylon Burks, Javon Kinlaw, Avante Maddox, Kyler Gordon, and Fletcher Cox. So get ourselves another receiver. Odell is getting older and older. And then help on the defensive line and in the secondary. I'm thinking we can land most, if not all, of these guys. Let's hope so. As we wait for EA to evaluate the offers, they have. Okay, who have we got left? So we did bring in Kinlaw, Kyler Gordon, and Fletcher Cox. Do we want to try and sweeten the deal for Traylon Burks? Yes, we do. So now that that is done, let's go ahead and see, did we land these two guys? I'm hopeful. I don't know that we did. They're both gone. Okay, we did get Traylon Burks. And we're set. Picked up our five guys. I'm happy with this. Now it's time to sim to the draft. All we have are late round picks. And honestly, the draft has made my franchise crash every single time I go through it. So I'm hopeful. I'm just going to sim it. I don't care. All we care about is the Super Bowl at this point. I'm going to sim it. And we're going to see if that works for us. And here we are. The team is up to a 91 overall. That is insane, bro. This team should be godly this season this should be a dominant squad i'm thinking cruise to the super bowl like one loss i'm talking 2015 carolina panthers like selfies in the end zone all of that give me something good this year let's look at the draft recap really quick see who the cpu took for us of course no one that is going to be starting obviously with this god squad we've assembled but i am curious did they get us anyone exciting Anyone in the 70s? No. We got a backup quarterback and a nice outside linebacker. I think we'll call him Hamilton. Very nice. All right, let's take one final look. Week one roster. So changes that we've made. Joe Tooney, starting left guard. The offensive line looks very solid. I think we're in good shape there. Gesicki should give us a nice vertical option. Jo Speaking of vertical options, Johnny Bryan, look at him there with his 99 speed. You've got Traylon Burks is a good third option. Hunt is up to a 94 overall, so very nice there. And then on the defensive side of the ball. Just superstars across the board. Just the drafting has been phenomenal. Despite not playing, Leonard Oakman, that hidden dev, superstar. Bennett is up to an 84 overall, also a superstar. So very nice development there. I mean, just stacked across the board. I think we're in a good position. I'm thinking Super Bowl, but we got to get to the playoffs first. Let's get there and let's hope for the best. All right, but here we are, week one, final season. We aren't even worried about the midseason point. Actually, no, we're not. Let's get to the playoffs. Fingers crossed, one last time. Let's get there. Okay, and 13-4, and four, an outstanding season for this team. Unfortunately, not the one seed. Curious to see who is better than us, but good enough for an NFC South Championship again. We get another matchup with the Seahawks. Let's get into the stats. Okay, so number two offense in the NFL. Very nice there. How was the defense? We were 14th, so a bit of a regression there. A little bit worrisome coming into our final year of the season, of the series, I should say. Hunt, again, getting it done. 5,700 yards, 44 touchdowns, 16 picks. Similar numbers to last year. And then you've got Demarius Dickens. His yards per carry gets better and better every year. 4.7, 18 scores. Did fumble twice. That's okay. One of the all-time name players. I know we're about to wrap up the video here shortly, but I got to show some love. Demarius Dickens, man stud and receiving johnny bryan well worth that first round pick from the colts 1500 yards 14 scores what i tell you guys about that speed t higgins 1300 yards Traylon burks a thousand yards and 10 scores 
Gasicki puts up almost a thousand. There's Demarius Dickens with almost five hundred. Is Odell still with us? Odell, maybe he retired. I don't know. But Odell's gone. That's fine, I guess. He's not around for the Super Bowl chase. Ika McWanu, 11 sacks allowed. Defense, Devin White with 144 tackles. How did we do on sacks? We've got Nick Bosa, 12 and a half. Tremaine Dobson with 12. Leonard Oakman, as a full-time starter, gets 10 and a half. Very nice. A little bit quieter than last year on the pass rush. Avante Maddox, random signing. He gets six picks for us. Five for Devin White. Very nice. And here are your yearly awards. Desmond Ritter wins MVP, and he's always in the hunt, but he doesn't win MVP. He is always in the race. Um, so are we for Coach of the Year. We come in at third. We don't win a Coach of the Year award this series. That's okay. We still have a Super Bowl left to go. Johnny Bryan and Demarius Dickens both get some votes. I just want to look at the winners. Did we get any winners on the yearly awards? It's not looking like it. No, I'm going to assume not. That is unfortunate, although we don't care tremendously about that. Let's get into the Super Bowl. Oh, there's one. Harrison Butker, best kicker in the league. Let's go. And here we are again with the Seattle Seahawks. We beat them last year. Can we beat them again? Let's hope so. Okay, we do get the win. I was nervous there for a second. I don't know why, but 27-17, little close for comfort. I'm not going to lie. Let's look at the schedule and see... How did we move on to our second straight divisional round where it looks like we will be facing off with, I presume, Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. Let's look at that playoff schedule here. Wild card round. Okay, let's see here. Here's our game against the Seahawks. 27-17. And they did outgain us in total yards. Surprising. Given the score, Brad Knight has a good game. What do we say about that rivalry for years to come? Hunt, not the best game, although Demarius Dickens finds the end zone twice. T. Higgins hits 100 yards. They've got Amon Ra, the god. Devin White has 12 tackles. How did we do on sacks? Tremaine Dobson is just a stud. Javon Kinlaw gets a sack for us. Good for him. And Avante Maddox gets an interception. Very nice. But here we go. Divisional round against the Cardinals. We are the much better team on paper. 92 to 83. That's usually when you lose these games. I'm calling it right now. If we lose this round, I will not be surprised in the slightest. Let's upgrade our players as if that's going to make a difference. There's just four of them. I did see Leonard Oakman on there, though. So very studly season he had for us. Hopefully he can continue that success in the divisional round. I don't want to look... Could this be it for the series? Are we going to fall to Kyler Murray in Call of Duty season? We don't. 49-35. Close call. Let's look at the stats. And here are your conference championship games. The one that we are most focused on is going to be our win over the Cardinals. We put up 49 points, a very nice showing from the offense. And it was led by Matthew Hunt, who has a nearly perfect game, passer rating almost 150. Kyler Murray doesn't get a whole lot going. In the rushing game, Demarius Dickens over 100 yards with three touchdowns. Man, dog. Okay, Demarius. Traylon Burks over 100 yards with a score. T. Higgins with a touchdown. Dallas Goddard, who we did try to get. Maybe he's regretting his decision a little bit. Demarius Dickens also finds the end zone receiving. Man, so we show him some love, and he shows us some back. Four touchdowns and a playoff win. Love that. Avante Maddox, unsung hero. A pick last week, now leading the team in tackles. Brian Bates, Brian Burns, excuse me, gets two sacks. And Avante Maddox with an interception. Man, so if you're starting a franchise, sign Avante Maddox. All right, and it all comes down to this. Us and the Falcons, an NFC South battle. Super Bowl is on the line. It's a 92 overall team versus an 82, but again, it, just, it matters so little in these games. The Cardinals, we have them by a good margin. They still put up 35 points on us. So you never know with these. We are going against the league MVP, Desmond Ritter. You can't count him out. He wins a lot of Super Bowls in Sims. Maybe we go Falcons for our next rebuild, especially if we lose here. I hope not. I kind of have a feeling, though. I'm just saying. I don't want to jinx it. 
But can we get to the Super Bowl? We do. 32-14, we are headed to the Chiefs. Let's go, let's look at the stats. And for some reason, once you get to this point, I just click through the menus, it takes us to our team schedule, but here's our team schedule. We beat the Falcons in the playoffs, conference championship game. How do we do? 451 yards of total offense, very nice. And how did Hunt do? Another fantastic game, 344 through the air, three touchdowns, again, no picks. And we forced the league MVP into having a rough game. Not good at all. Demarius Dickens, 88 on the ground. In the receiving game, Traylon Burks just having a monster season for us. No one wanted him in free agency, but he is just having quite a playoff run with us. Donovan Peoples-Jones is a Falcon. That's somewhat intriguing, I suppose. Tremaine Dobson led the team in tackles. How did we do on sacks? Pretty quiet. Derek Brown is a Falcon, so ah, remember, he had he wanted nothing to do with us. So how you like us now, Derek? And Byron Jones and Brian Burns both combining for a sack in the victory. Josh Wiggins gets two interceptions, and we are Super Bowl bound. Now here's what we're gonna do for the Super Bowl. Us against the Chiefs. We're gonna upgrade our players, get ourselves in the best position possible. It's an 87 overall team, so they are the defending champions, I believe. If I remember correctly, it is the Kansas City Chiefs. And let's go ahead. We're going to get in there. We're going to do a play-by-play. -play. I'm not hopping in there, not cheating, but this is the last game of the series. I'd like to see my guys in action. I'd like to see what they can do. Let's get into it. All right, man, here we are in the Super Bowl. Now, I did have to select play full game, but what I'm going to do is go into the moments, and we're just going to sim right through. Just gonna take it nice and slow here in the Super Bowl. Speed, we're gonna go normal because I would like to see the play-by-play. -play. So let's get into it. We're gonna send to the end of the game. So they get the ball to start. It's a touchback. First and 10, we start off with a five-yard penalty, Adafi Owe, six-yard rush by Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Edwards-Alaire again on the ground. They are going full run to start the game. They do get a penalty on the offensive side of the ball. Third and 16, Mahomes has to throw it away, so it is going to be punted to us. Our first possession of the Super Bowl. It's thrown away by Matthew Hunt. Second down, 10-yard reception to Johnny Bryan. Third and one, eight-yard rush by the quarterback. Moving downfield, thrown away. Five-yard rush by Dickens. Third and five. A 49-yard touchdown pass to Johnny Bryan. We take the lead in the Super Bowl on a massive play. We've got our own Tyreek Hill here. Chiefs, second possession. It's a touchback. First and ten. It's a one-yard rush by Quintez Cephas. Not ideal. Six-yard rush by Allaire. They get a first down. First and ten. Just running the ball a lot this game, it appears. Knocked away by Leonard Oakman, probably batted at the line. Mahomes hits Edwards Alaire for a first down. Enrique Farrow on the ground. Loses some yards, third and long. Can't get it. Fourth down, they have to punt again. We've got the ball here. Thrown away, second and ten. It's a nine-yard rush. Third and one, 14-yard completion to Johnny Bryan. Johnny Bravo, you should say. 14 yards to T. Higgins. T. Higgins does get injured on the play, unfortunately. First and ten, Gasicki with a big gain of 16. First and ten, thrown away again. Second and ten, he does get sacked by Romeo Aquara. Third and 20, has to throw it away. Can we get the field goal? It would be a long one. It's good. Harrison Butker against his former team. It's a 10-0 lead in the Super Bowl as the first quarter winds down. Chiefs will get the ball again, have not scored yet. Greg Dolchich with a 13-yard gain. Jelani Woods, the former Colt. Thrown away, th big third down right here. And Mahomes picks it up with his legs. They're at midfield. Mahomes rushing again. Big completion to Quintez Cephas. 24 yards. Byron Jones is hurt on the play. First and 10. It's a rush by Enrique Farrow. They've got a third down. It is complete. They are knocking on the door here. And Mahomes hits Brian Edwards for a score. It's a 10-7 game. About midway through the second. We've got the ball again. Johnny Bravo, 15 yards. Another completion to Mike Gesicki for nine. We're having a great day through the air. Demarius Dickens picks up four on the ground. Three-yard rush by Demarius Dickens. We're past the midfield point. Gesicki picks up 17, knocking on the door again. Six-yard completion to Johnny Bryan. Second and four, eight-yard rush by Dickens. We're on the 13-yard line, and it's a touchdown. 
to Johnny Bravo again. 17-7 here in the Super Bowl. What a game these two are having. That quarterback-receiver connection is on fire. Can Mahomes keep up? He's trying his best. He hits Juju Smith-Schuster on a 75-yard touchdown. The Super Bowl is on fire so far. And now we have the ball heading up to the two-minute warning. Dickens gets a nine-yard catch. Dickens gets a six-yard rush. Two-minute warning. And there's the six-yard rush. I think they're showing that, us, that to us again. Another six-yard rush, and Dickens is hurt on the play. That is not good. We're getting banged up here as Hunt gets sacked, losing momentum quickly, but he hits T. Higgins for 17 yards. He gets sacked again by Taylor Rapp. Not good, but he's responding. Hits Traylon Burks for five yards. Big third down. Hits T. Higgins for 10 yards. They'll need to hit a field goal here. They do. 20 to 14. The Chiefs, they've got three timeouts, 42 seconds. Plenty of time to make a play here. Can they take a lead heading into halftime? They're trying as Mahomes hits Edwards for 26 yards. Juju for 11. They're moving. He has to throw it away. Second and 10, thrown away again. Can we get a stop here? Third and long, hits Dolkit, Dolchich for six yards. They'll get a field goal. It's 2017 most likely heading into the half, unless the Panthers want to try something here. I doubt it. Well, you never know. T. Higgins, 23 yards. Traylon Burks for eight. I don't know if this will be enough time, but we'll see. Seven-yard rush by Dickens, probably heading into the half here. And, yep, that's what it's looking like. 2017 at halftime. It is a high-scoring game. Panthers get the ball to start things off. Losing my voice here. Six-yard rush by Demarius Dickens. Thankfully, the injury wasn't too serious. Traylon Burks gets a 13-yard gain. First and 10, Johnny Bryan. There's he again. He is him. Traylon Burks, 15-yard gain. Traylon Burks again, 13-yard gain, having a huge drive. Six-yard rush by Dickens on the eight-yard line. Hunt has to throw it away, third and four. Hits Traylon Burks, it's first and goal on the one. Is it Dickens' time? It is. Demarius Dickens getting the touchdown in the Super Bowl. It's a 10-point game. Chiefs get the ball. First possession of the second half. What can they do with it? Six-yard rush by Edwards Allaire. What are they doing next? He loses some yards. Third and six. Brian Edwards, 17 yards. They cannot be stopped. Five-yard rush. Second and five. Edwards Alaire picks up 18 through the air. First and 10, it's a five-yard rush. Second and five. Three yards. Big third down right here. What do they do? Picks it up with his legs. Edwards Alaire again. Dolchich, 20 yards. They are on the one-yard line, and they are going to score. Clyde Edwards Alaire, it's two rushing touchdowns back-to-back -to -back here in the Super Bowl. Extra point is good. It is a three-point game as the third quarter starts to wind down. Panthers with the ball again. They've been great. Hunt has to throw it away. And it looks like a turnover. It is Trent McDuffie with the interception. Mahomes throws it away on first down, but they're in the red zone. Dolchich drops the pass. Big third down. We need a stop. And Mahomes hits Dolchich. They're going to score here. They are. Edwards Alaire, two rushing touchdowns in the third quarter as the Chiefs have their first lead of the game. Panthers, can they respond? What are they going to do here with the ball coming off that turnover? Going through the air to T. Higgins for seven yards. Seven yards again to Mike Gesicki. First and ten, it's a four-yard rush by Dickens. They're moving the ball. Second and six, he loses some yards. Big third down here. You need this, and Gasecki picks it up. 14-yard gain. Heading into the fourth quarter now. Eight-yard gain to Gasecki. Second and two, Traylon Burks with a 38-yard touchdown. Panthers retake the lead. 34-31. Chiefs, they get the ball back. What will Mahomes do with it here? He is clutch. We've seen him do this in a big spot. Hands it off to Edwards Alaire. Second and six. Five-yard gain. Third and one. Incomplete. It's a big fourth down. What do they do? They're going to punt it. I mean, you kind of have to. Deep in your own territory. This is. Can this be a put-away drive for the Panthers? Second and eight. Johnny Bryan, six-yard gain. Third and three. 14-yard gain to Gasicki. That trade is paying off. Three-yard rush by Dickens. Can the Panthers do it here? 11 yards to Johnny Bryan. Let's go. First and 10. Passes dropped by RJ Young. Second and 10. We get a penalty. Five yards against the defense. Bilal Nichols. Seven-yard rush by RJ Young. First and 10. It's a three-yard rush. We're in field goal range. Second and seven, Traylon Burks. It's third and inches. What do they do? Incomplete pass. They'll probably have to go for the field goal here. It's blocked. 34-31.
Big play for the Chiefs. Incomplete pass. Second and 10. Hits Edwards Alaire for six yards. Third and four. Eight yards to Quintez Cephas. First and 10. Eight yards to Juju. They're at midfield. A seven yard rush by Mahomes picks it up with his legs. First and 10. Jelani Woods for 12 yards. The new Travis Kelsey, I suppose. They're showing the same play again. First and 10. Three yards to Edwards Alaire. Inside the two minute warning. One yard to Edwards Alaire. What do they do? Third and six. Hits Brian Edwards for a 25 yard touchdown. 38 34. This is it. The whole series is on the line right here. Can Matthew Hunt lead the Panthers to their first Super Bowl? Six Six-yard rush by R.J. Young. What's he doing in the game? Second and four. It's a three-yard gain. Third and two. Hits Gusecki for seven yards. We're still alive here. First and ten. Traywin Burks, four-yard gain. Second and six. Incomplete. Third and six right here. What do you do? Sacked. It's a fourth and 14. This is it. And it's thrown away. That's going to be the Super Bowl. Mahomes is going to kneel it out. The Panthers lose an absolute heartbreaker. Let it halftime. That interception and the blocked field goal. That's going to do it. That is unfortunate. Very exciting. Glad I jumped into this. Let's look at the season recap as the confetti falls and Mahomes has his third ring. And let's look at the stats here. Matthew Hunt, 420 yards and three touchdowns. Did everything he could. That interception just could not have come at a worse time. I do want to see the player stats here. Mahomes just has a perfect game. No mistakes. That's the difference maker. Where are we on yards? Demarius Dickens had 15. Oh, this is rushes, not catches. I don't know why I got so excited. Traylon Burks actually led the game in catches. Johnny Bryan, huge game, 138 yards. It's just unfortunate. Defense couldn't make a play. It's hard when you're going against Mahomes. That's going to do it. And there is your season recap. Last one of the series, Mahomes gets Super Bowl MVP. So let's look at the Super Bowls here. So you have the Cowboys, the Colts, the Browns, and then the Chiefs go back to back to finish off the series. And that's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had a lot of fun recording this. Hopefully you enjoyed my play-by-play -play in the Super Bowl. Let me know if you hated it. Won't do it for future videos. But please, it would just mean the world to me. Like comment, subscribe, takes seconds out of your day, makes my whole week. Thank you guys. I will see you on the next video.